All right, let's get started. Um, well, they changed things around. Facebook updated. That's interesting. Okay. All right, I'm excited. Some of you guys um, that are on here um, haven't talked to Enrique for a bit. But, uh, excited that he's turning on. So last week we talked about the outer court, which the uh, which is the altar sacrifice and the uh, the brazen labor, which um, you know. And as I'm doing putting this together, it it kind of made me think about going through seal training. This uh, this the process of becoming a Navy SEAL, the outer court would be SEAL training, BUDS training, and what's called STT, SEAL tactical training, which is advanced training and a board and a test that you had to pass before you get your trident. Then you get to get the platoon and you have to operate. So this is, we're gonna talk about more of that throughout this uh, presentation. So the, uh, the holy place is the, behind the first veil of the temple and there's some furniture in there. There's the altar of incense, the table of showbread, and the menorah. Um, it's actually in a different order. It's, it's all the way to the right would be the table of showbread, then the altar of incense, and then the menorah. And then we're going to talk about how those relate to um, business, the business process. Okay. So the... Um, Table of showbread is representing learning. So it's six slows, two rows of six, the so 66 books of the Bible. But it's interesting because the temple was way before they ever wrote the Bible. So did they make the 66 books of the Bible to correspond with the two rows of six loaves of bread? Bread represents teaching, okay? <clears throat> and in the morals, especially, okay? And, uh, so this, for business, this would be specifically um, the uh, getting boned up on your trade or your business, okay? Learning, um, what is that? The, uh, right? Right. Um, this is... Uh, You know, whatever your trade is, right? Whether it's sales or your specific um, service or product or widget, whatever it is that you are providing, it's getting to know that information, reading all the publications, you know, studying, uh, knowing what you're talking about. I mean, my God, when I was uh, with the high CR chemicals, learning about the different you know, I never heard the word surfactant, the scientific word for soap. You know, I did know that uh, what surfactants do is they separate the bonds and hydrocarbons, okay, which makes um, things toxic or stick. Okay, so when you, when you add the soap, it breaks up that bond. Now that the water just washes it away. All right, so that's, you know, some of the things that, that, that I had to learn. Um, different, you know, the, the time you need to let them scrub and bubbles do all the work for you, you know, things like that, right? Um, what I do now, learning about the different uh, strategies for whole life insurance or, or the different uh, riders for um, long term care, uh, catastrophic illness, um, you know, there's there's these different add-ons that enhance these these policies. Um, you know, I never knew all this time I've been in the industry that only whole life insurance can you you actually earn a return, the guaranteed rate of return, even if you borrow that money out of the policy, and that's what makes banking strategies work. Okay, make them so appealing, right? But whatever it is. You need to learn 
your process for your business or for your service or your, your widget, okay, you are, you are learning that information. You are becoming knowledgeable, okay? Then the, uh, the, uh, there's the altar of incense. Now, I'm like, you know, we do what's called uh, in a church, they, have, they do praise and worship, they do intercession, and people are, you know, they're dancing and singing, and, and I'm like, you know, what is that doing, right? And uh, I'm thinking, you know, what this kind of, for some reason, reminds me of mission planning in the SEAL teams. And then uh, one night we went to uh, intercession, and this uh, prophet Greg, who has a you know, retired army sergeant major, did training on the temple. And he did exactly what you would do um, in mission planning in, in the SEAL teams. And what that is, is more experienced operators share their knowledge, share their standard operating procedures or what they call SOPs. And, that, you know, the uh, everything from uh, your escape and evade plan, your loss of comms plan, your, you know, your missed extraction plan, your, your medevac plan. You know, all these things they've done over and over and over again. So the new guys don't have to go through those hard experiences learning, you know, establishing those SOPs. They can just borrow it from the more experienced people. Same thing with uh, intercession. All right. But in business, exactly. This is, this is, this is key. This is the mastermind groups. You know, you see um, a lot of organizations, they'll, they'll have these masterminds. You know, I think they don't really um, utilize them to their maximum potential because they don't really understand. Now, if, if you have a, uh, you know, what Jason Cisneros does on his Saturday morning podcast for the, you know, the Chairman Project, now to be branded the Built to Exit podcast, he does, he does that. He has a group of subject matter experts that are on the call and um, and they give, you know, their, uh, you know, what they get out of his presentation, how it stimulates their mind and they share their understanding. And, and, uh, and maybe that can help somebody who's got a business. Um, you know, he doesn't give all, get it all away because you know, he charges money for his consulting. Right, but you know his main target is businesses that are like a three hundred thousand dollar a year annual revenue, building them up to a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar a year annual revenue. So if you're like below that, um, you know you can just glean. I take copious notes. I'll probably watch his podcast like you know four times over a weekend, and um, take notes and listen and and uh, get what he's talking about. You know, and I've done it enough times. I can go back and look at you know how he's progressed in uh, what he's talking about. Um, and, the, and the main thing I'll just kind of promote here, um, there's uh, the reason we are not a socialist country already is because of small to mid-sized businesses, you know, single you know, um, owner-operator businesses of up to you know, uh, 499 employees fit that category. And those type of businesses um, are what's keeping this country from becoming socialist, right? The government taking over everything. Right? They're they're doing a lot of the work that needs to be done uh, independently. They see the they see the need and they fill it. Okay, and then but ninety five percent of businesses fail, and so he's got a system to help increase the success rate. So. And this this part of it, the experienced uh, business owners or operators sharing their knowledge with the less experienced or people that don't have all the answers, they can get it from you know, the, the lessons learned from somebody who has experience. And that's what this represents for business, okay, the business process. Then there's the menorah. The menorah, that's going to be... Um, 
the uh, the this is represents the church, right? But it's also um, the the oil represents you know higher level of learning and teaching, and it gets fed from the menorah on the other side of the veil into the holy of holies, which is going to be the apostle or the high priest, right? And it's basically this represents um, direct mentorship from a subject matter expert. Okay, and I can think of over oh, um, my my shooting partner in the SEAL teams. He was two years younger than me, but he'd been the SEAL teams two years longer than me. Uh, he's the one that uh, helped me. He taught me a lot about field craft. Um, our trade off is I taught him how to fight, right? I taught him how to box. And um, and he taught, you know, he helped me uh, build my ghillie suit. So when I, when I went to sniper school, he already been through the comm course once and we both went through the comm course together. Um, you know, so there were, uh, you know what he does now? He's a logistics trainer for the CIA. He teaches what he taught me to new operators for the CIA. That's what he does. Okay. So that's what that would be like when it was a sniper school. Uh, actually, I had Carlos Hathcock, who was one of my instructors in sniper school. Um, I had some really good uh, instructors that uh, when I was in free fall jump master school. And the, uh, you know, some of the, you know, and I, one of those guys moved to Panama, so I, I counseled with him when I was stationed in Panama, running a, the air loft, running the, the air operations department for the unit there in Panama. I'd call him up and say, hey, what do I do with this? And he'd give me, give me my solution, right? But it's having, you know, shooting, uh, Fred Fritch, um, Van Hall, uh, made me the marksman that I am today. You know, it, it's a, uh, that's what we're talking about. And in, in, in having that in business is golden. Right? My first manager for the first mortgage company I ever worked for, um, he was a Marine. He had an NBA. And uh, he hired me just because I was a Navy SEAL, right? We had rapport right off the bat. Um, he used to like to talk about the niches or the different, um, the different, uh, lenders you know who's the best to go to for a owner occupied or cash out or non-owner occupied you know who's the best for um you know, no income documentation you know, um you know he would go over this so he knew the niches and I, I took that um to when i went on my own to the first mortgage we did second mortgage for that company and then the first mortgage same thing i learned the same thing um Windsor Capital. They had an awesome website. It had a uh, like a bulletin board, and and people could post questions like, "Who do you use for this?" And the more experienced loan officers would give their input. This is who I this is who I use for this, and, and their you know, use a cover sheet, blah blah blah. They would uh, give you in skin their standard operating procedures on how to best. Uh, you know who to best you could use for whatever scenario you're, you're working on and how to best package your, your files so this is not new this is this but this is great to have it. both of the um the mastermind um process and this the menorah or the you know, direct mentorship from a subject matter expert can just make all the difference i mean it's huge uh leg up with your business using this, right? Okay. And then here we are in the SEAL platoon, you know, your uh, platoon workup process is very similar to this, right? They're going to send you to a school and uh, then you get in the platoon and you're doing the workup. You're going to get these different, you're going to do a work duck, you're going to do um, you know, land navigation, you're going to do combat swimmer, you're going to do jungle warfare, you're going to do CQB, um, all before you get in the platoon, right? And, or, you know, what, before you want to play, right? And, and then you can have an operational readiness and extra exercise and you're going to be graded and you pass and that means you're ready for deployment. And so that is the same kind of process. You know, here we, here we are, you know, you're going to get your specific training or advanced training and then uh, 
You can say it's advanced training right there. How about that? Right. And then uh, there's the mastermind. Then, then that's the mission plan. I used to hate mission planning, right? I just want to go kick ass. But you had to have the details. You had to know what you were doing. You would dirt dive it until you knew it in your sleep. You were dreaming about your missions, right? Uh, before you went out, you, you knew them. But then things go, go wrong, but you have standard operating procedures. This happens, you do this. You, know, you use comms, you put up a flare. Right? You, you get uh, you miss your extraction, you go to the secondary extraction. You, know, um, you get a certain code through the radio that they know that you missed your first extraction. Right? The, the uh, down man, you know, there's certain pro procedures you know, of, uh, of what you're going to do. So all these things, you know, it's, you learn, you, you, you actually have every detail planned out before you go on your mission. You know, you, it's commonly said in the SEAL teams, you, you plan your dive and you dive your plan, and that works with everything, okay? in business especially, okay? And then here we are, the mentoring from a subject matter expert, uh, you know, we'll do, you know, who I, Fred Fritch and Carlos Hathcock and, and different um, experts in whatever discipline that I was trying to learn. Um, you know, my my shooting partner was a subject matter expert with field craft, and uh, he taught me. And uh, so these are the same thing works with business, right? It's um, man. Uh, Working out these um, family banking strategies, you know, to pay off your mortgage faster. I mean, I never knew about it. I've been, been in the industry for, you know, God, um, like almost 20 years and never knew, never understood how these things work, right? Um, I was always taught, oh, yeah, this is something else, right? Your subconscious thoughts, your subconscious programming, is developed from the last trimester of your mother's womb until you're seven years old. You're in a um, brain wave called theta, and you just receive, receive, receive. Highly susceptible to suggestion, right? But when you're seven years old, your discernment kicks in. You're like, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. I got, I got a spanking last time, but, but, but what happens is you end up with this inherent in this filing cabinet compiled by you from the last trimester of your mother's womb until you're seven years old. Most people don't go back and reorganize that filing cabinet. They don't put things in order. They don't, they don't throw out the, the, the misinformation, you know, like Santa Claus and the Easter bunny and, and uh, you know, these, uh, these things that you're taught, right, during that period of time, and people still hold on to those, right? They still, you know, I don't know, they, you know, so, you know, nobody ever does it. Nobody ever goes back and goes, okay, that's that was stupid. <laughs> We're not doing that, right? That was that didn't work. We're not doing that, right? Um, until you learn that okay, you you can do that, and then that's what this process does, all the way from actually in religion, right? Or the the, you know, the temple process, you know, you're repenting. You're you know you're identifying those things you want to eliminate out of your life that you're doing wrong that you don't want to do anymore, and you've identified them and you. Your subconscious has to take the commands from your conscious mind, and it works when you give it that command. You take time to figure out what you don't want in your life, and you command your subconscious to quit doing them. It has to do it, okay. but most people don't. Okay, and then um, you know, so that's you can do that through all the stuff, all the all the you know. Uh, you know, the, you know, you got the habit of, you know, someone that gives you a hard time, you bust them in the mouth. <laughs> you don't do that. You learn something else. You learn to uh, to, to, to listen and be empathetic. And you know, I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> when I first got in the mortgage business, everything was fine. Sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here. That'll be a $350 check to legal appraisal service. Everything was fine if they just kept signing and agreeing. But when they started disagreeing, I'm like, what's your problem? Didn't you tell me you wanted to do this loan? Didn't we agree on this interest rate, right? Um, you know, that that uh, I didn't realize that when somebody gives you an objection, 
they're identifying their greatest concern. And if you if you can satisfy that, you you know, then they're good to go, right? You can move forward, right? So you have to take the time to satisfy those objections. You have to, to listen and be the one that can give them the answers, give them the solution, right? And how did I learn this? I learned this from a mentor, right? somebody, you know, teaching me that, uh, you know, you got to listen. You got to, you know, oh, yeah, right. Um, he would say, you know, if I, even if I know the answer, I don't tell them right away because they're just going to think of another one. And I said, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, that's a good question. Let me, um, I think I know, but let me, let me confirm and then um, I'll call you back. You know, I'll tell you, but you get, you get right there at the, the, the signing table. Okay, remember that question you had? This is the answer. Are we good? And then he signed, right? So that, that was, you know, that's what I learned from my mentor, right? Had a, had a broker that was, I uh, had a, he went, had an MBA, went to law school. Um, taught me how to calculate the truth in lending and the good faith estimate down to the penny, right? And uh, he was hard, right? But I learned that kind of stuff. I, and it set me apart. Um, I was able to become a broker myself, right? Same thing with these, uh, these uh, what's really fascinating is these uh, family banking strategies, the infinite banking strategies. Um, I had to work it out myself. I had to take a scenario that I was very familiar with. Uh, somebody had a total debt of uh, $499,388,417 was a mortgage at 5% interest, right? And uh, they're paying a total of $2,782 a month in debt service, including the mortgage. And uh, by adding, by doing a debt roll up, adding an extra $100 to the payment of the smallest debt, they would pay everything off in 17 and a half years, just paying their bills on time, that $100 just added to the payment of the smallest debt. When they take that off, they get that combined amount, $100 plus the debt service amount for the smallest debt, added it to the payment of the next smallest debt, right? And just paid their bills on time, but it cost an extra $100. Then I learned about the pill method. There's a certain amount of, you know, in this scenario, $1,687 a month principal and interest payment on that mortgage, the $388,417 mortgage, of five hundred dollars a month was going toward principal, paying that eleven days after your due date. Okay, you pay the whole thing off in fifteen years, right? But and if you add that into the debt roll up, now you've paid everything off in twelve years. That's the best I could do until I learned about these family banking strategies. Where you just you pay the your debt service. You have a, a large enough policy, whole life policy that you pay your debt service amount on top of the scheduled premium, target premium, right into the policy, you overfund it. And you borrow that money, the debt service out of the policy, it's a wash. And so they they give you a credit of 5% and they charge you 5%, all right? So the credit covers the interest, right? That's how you get away with not having to pay taxes on the gain. Uh, that's how you get tax-free money in retirement, right? But you don't have to wait till you're 59 and a half. Right? And then you borrow that money out of the policy and you pay your debts on time. And I work out this scenario and in nine years and two months, you're this in that scenario, you have enough money in the policy to completely pay off the remaining amount of the balance of the mortgage. And now you're paying yourself back. Right. And well, I just we just did a training, a lot of real life uh situation. I think it was just like eleven years. This had guy had like Three houses, paid up all three houses in 11 years, just paying in the policy, borrowing out the policy, paying the mortgages. In 11 years, there's enough money in the policy to pay up all three mortgages. Now he's paying himself back. Okay. That's what I had to work that out. Well, using their software, instead of nine years and two months, it's like seven and a half years. Okay. So the software works better, but I had to work it out basically longhand for myself to figure that out. So, you know, this is, um, you know, expectations, you know, are applying desire with a process, with a system process, okay? Jason Cisneros has a process, right, a system, and you have it, it's just, it makes things so much easier when you have 
a proven system to follow. You just you know you do this, it's going to work, right? And and you get that. You know, this is expectation. Expectation is a powerful force that draws things to you. Use it wisely by always expecting things you want. When you implement a debt roll up, paying down your debts using a debt roll up, and uh, when you make extra money, you save that money. Right? You start, and it's it's a, it was amazing when I started doing it. I had a I had a plan. I wanted to buy this house. It took me two years to have enough money to buy this house, and uh, I used to do the debt roll up and then. Saving ten percent of my income. All right, um, I was going to be two years. I'll be able to buy this house. Well, it didn't do it exactly as my plan. Actually, I started making more money. All right, but I bought that house on the exact day that I had planned to buy that house. In the exact month, in July of uh, two thousand two, I bought that house. Okay, I'm like, wow. That was something, right? There's, and there's been so many times in my life where I've had this desire for something and, and written it down and, and uh, you worked out a plan and it materialized. You know, it, was, it was amazing. Um, the, uh, so this is uh, what you can do. This is you know, not only planning it yourself, but planning it with a team, with a you know, getting the right information, getting uh, you know, doing the mastermind or having you know, contemporaries you know, share experiences, their SOPs, and then the mentorship from the subject matter, somebody who's been there before and learned the lesson. So these are all the things, you know, and we're going to implement this for the um, this apprenticeship program. In Brenham, you know, for the we're actually gonna um, with with the way things are, um, you know, in, in incorporating the um, the transition away from the dollar um, to uh, you know helping small businesses make that transition faster. And lead the way, right? Um, that's where the power is going to be, right? Um, helping people start off with a business to be able to also um, move away from the uh, fiat currency. That was that. What is that? That's where the government can increase or decrease the value of the currency, right? and, and basically rob you through the back door. That's what they do. They create inflation. That's what that does. And there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, well, things are getting to the point where we can do something about it. And we'll start off with small businesses, right? All right. Well, I hope uh, you got a lot out of this. Uh, we're going to talk about um, next week. We're going to talk about the uh, being a CEO and uh, using the, uh, the, um, Ark of the Covenant, um, you know, being the high priest, being the CEO, right there, that you, you've achieved that. Now you're looking back into the temple and you're organizing and you're directing and you're um, making all that happen. All right. Well, I'm uh, thank you very much for showing up. Have a great Friday. Thank you.